everyone, I'm Daisy Allen, Collections Curator at the National Scouting Museum, and today I have for you Tramp of the Wolves, also known as Awaited in Vain by Ernest Thompson Seaton. Tramp of the Wolves is one of the three major Seaton pieces on display here at the museum, all of which showcase Seaton's developing ideas about wildlife, the importance of predators in the natural world, and wolves in particular. Seaton traveled to New York to continue his study of art in the Art Student Academy, where he met up with another up-and-coming student by the name of Daniel Carter Beard. In the 1890s, Seaton's went to France to study art in Paris. By this time, Seaton was a world-renowned expert on wolves. And while he was in Paris, he read a story about a man who, according to some versions of the story, was also well known for successfully hunting wolves. One night, that man disappeared. The next morning, his remains were found with the appearance of having been killed and eaten by a pack of wolves. While the story could not be proven, it was a fascinating tale for Seaton. So he created this painting showing the aftermath of a possibly failed, or depending on how you looked at it, a very successful hunt. As you can see, it's very detailed and perhaps a little gruesome. In 1892, Seaton entered his painting to be shown at the Louvre's Grand Salon, one of the most prestigious art exhibitions in France at the time. However, the expedition rejected the painting for its 1892 exhibit. Among the reasons for their rejection was the theme of the painting. While the general ideology of the time focused on the supremacy and right of man to conquer and dominate the natural world, shaping nature in accordance to his will. Wolves in particular were considered to be dangerous, both to livestock and human life, and were regularly hunted. By the time of this painting, wolves were hunted to near extinction in France and throughout most of Western Europe. So the idea of flipping the script, nature besting man, didn't sit well with many people. It's worth noting that Seton himself seemed to fall into man's supremacy over nature camp in the years before his encounter with Lobo, which we'll cover in a later segment. The grisly nature of the details depicted in this painting also likely led to its rejection by the exhibition. Undaunted, Seaton cemented Triumph of the Wolves to be shown at Chicago's World Fair in 1893. The World's Fair did accept the painting for exhibition, but it was not given a place of prominence in the collection and was placed well above eye level towards the fringe of the exhibit. The painting returned to Seaton's possession, and after his death, it was among the many items donated to Philmont by Seaton's widow, Julia M. Seaton. Along with the actual painting, we also received many of the preliminary sketches Seaton drew as he developed his final work. Throughout his life, Seaton was a prolific artist and did thousands of watercolor paintings, sketches, and even ink drawings. Here at the National Scouting Museum, we have a vast array of his smaller works currently on display in these cases, along with nearly 3,000 additional works stored in the archives. That's all we have time for today. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please join us again as we showcase items and artifacts from the National Scouting Museum, Philmont Scout Ranch.